This is Spawnham! Welcome fellow barbarians, here we are with an exclusive interview with Conan Angelo, a massage therapist and stuntsman for the 1982 film Conan the Barbarian. He was described by Arnold Schwarzenegger as his wildest trainer. Hey Conan, there were some rumours going around that Sandal's girlfriends couldn't keep their hands off you. What's with that? They did, they kept their hands off of me, but I was hired as a massage therapist. That was the only way I could get into the film. There was, they were only bringing seven Americans to Spain. I had to ar actually arrive in Spain and then audition my skill even before I got officially hired. But once I demonstrated my skill, especially to John Milius, I got hired right away. And Milius said, I arrived on the set at a perfect time, meaning he had been filming out in the snow that the burning of the village and the, the the, the battle that went on, and he was sick. It was 12 hour day sitting in a director's chair. And here I got hired to stand behind him and work his neck and shoulders. Was Milius the first person you worked on as a massage therapist? The first person that I worked on was Sandal. And she, you know how hot she is. And I'm, that was like my first job. The producer, Raffaella Di Loretta said, take care of her. That was her instructions. And I went, that's cool. I got five months of taking care of her. I'm just super professional. I know what I'm doing. I work the nerve lines. I do this type of stuff. And one evening in Spain, I'm sitting having dinner with Arnold and Arnold nudges me and says, hey, the women are raving about your, your massage. And I looked at him and I said, that's great. I'm glad they are because I was the talk of the set when I got there to think that a massage therapist had arrived on a barbaric epic movie set and he just brings this, as Arnold said, brought spirit to the movie. And I and when you can sit in front of a direct sit in bed behind a director's chair and Billy has got to come in, get ready to direct, and then have his neck and shoulders worked on in between in between takes he loved me and so did sandal sandal was just she was the one that she experienced my massage the very first day i arrived in spain and nobody had seen me except arnold and her and she said hire this guy and i'm so thankful to her for getting me instantly hired and the other women were just just more fun more fun to deal with and I did a, I do a really good massage. I was thrilled to work on all the women. I and I and I'm proud to say, I work on Viking warrior princesses. I take care of them. That's my style. That's fantastic. So, what got you started to become a fan of Conan? I was living at a at a beach in Maui, and I had no job. Um, I was one of the 110, let's say, hippies that were living on this isolated cove in Maui, way 30 miles from the first person, okay? And three months there made me very barbaric because I had very little food. There were pirates and beating up people. And when I arrived at this beach, I was given a pup tent as like a gift from a guy that was leaving the island and I had no place to stay. So I set up camp in this little pup tent on this naked hippie beach. And so now I'm look. I'm this is the first time I've ever naked with a bunch of people. What was that like? It was paradise. It was beautiful water, beautiful sand. It was trying to survive. It was like, you knew you could be, be beat up anytime. You could be macheted just as a sport, like the beat up long hairs. Did you ever get personally attacked? I never got accosted. How did you manage that? Anybody that was like fierce and ready to beat anybody up, they found me as a pleasant person and I was captivating for them. But so, 
three months of living, of praying for food, praying for coconuts to drop so I could have some food, made me very barbaric looking. Hair down to here, serious look at life. And I had gone into town 30 miles away called Lahaina, and I was sitting at a coffee shop having my morning coffee and papaya. And I I was sitting next to a long, real long hair guy who was totally stoned, totally on acid. He literally had lost his friend walking around. And I noticed him, you know, in his state of mind. And I noticed two Hawaiians sitting over in the corner there looking like angrily at him. Why were they angry with him? Because the Hawaiians did not like long hairs because they brought drugs to the island and their kids were, were on drugs. And that would piss anybody off if that, if that kind of a long hair infiltration into the island caused their kids to be stoned out of their mind. How did you respond to this situation? Under my breath, I said to this guy, I said, hey, you better tone it down or you're going to get beat up. And I said this under my breath, very Conan-esque, shall I say. And he looked at me and he said, you remind me of the character Conan. My hair is down here, the seriousness of the moment. And he said, have you read the comic books? What year was that? This is 1972. 1972. How old were you then? I'm 22 years old. And I, I said, no, man, I've been living in the jungles. I don't have any access to any news. It's just survival is what I'm going through. And he said, well, I want to leave you some comic books before I leave the island. Where are you staying? And I said, well, I just am moving into this apartment across the way from this cafe. And um, so three days later, on my doorstep were Conan comic books, a stack of them. What was your first impressions of the Conan comics? I was enthralled by looking at the character Conan and thinking that I live in a violent territory. Um, you could be beat up any moment. It could happen any moment. And here was a brawler with an incredible build who would go into any tavern and beat up everybody, think anything about it. And I wasn't that way. I was raised to maybe become a doctor. And so I was into this healing, you know, kind of a, a mentality, never a violent, never martial artist, never. And I looked at the comic books and I saw him in the comic books, Conan character, battling these people in a tavern, knocking over everybody, slashing the heads. After a hard day in the forge or on the battlefield, it can make one very thirsty. Whether you're a slaying barbarian, a Mongolian marauder, a wizard out of Mojo, or a Viking warrior princess, there is only one thing to do. Head to the tavern, buy me an ale. Click the link below or scan the QR code to show your support for this channel. And now back to the interview with Conan Angelo. And I was so impressed with seeing a comic book character looking that way, wielding what? What was his tool of choice? The broadsword. And I thought, what a wicked way of living. That's how you make your, that's how you make your living by wielding a broadsword. And here I was going to be a doctor and, you know, do things like this and never even thought of living the life of having a broadsword in your hand. But I looked at the comic books and I thought someday there'll be a Hollywood Conan. And I knew if anybody could play that character, I'd have to become his friend because I, I as the size I am, I wanted to learn what he did for his body to get to that comic book look. And again, I only had comic books. There was no Schwarzenegger in the picture. This is what, 
years before I even met Arnold. How did you begin living the Conan fantasy? I took that comic book, I looked at it, I analyzed the motions that he was in with his sword, and I'd practice. I had a, a cow bone, a cow rib. That was my only like sword. And I'd be out in the in the wilderness and I'd practice the the motions that I would see in the comic books. What led you taking on the name of Kone? I was so captivated by that, by that fantasy. That fantasy of the, the comic book was so much more interesting than the reality that I was living in that I just kind of, I locked in on the name. I took on the name Conan. It was like a spiritual anointing that was happening to me. It was like, do not let anybody take away that name from you. And I took on the name my normal name was Jack Michelangelo, UCLA honor student, pre-med, etc. That was all bullshit living in the jungles because they had nothing. In the jungles, you had to be like a Conan-esque kind of character. So I took on the name and I it was like a focus. I didn't want anybody to deter me from tuning into the Conan fantasy. What made you interested in belly dancing? I took that comic book and I analyzed it. I looked at the girls that were in the the, the, the comic book and there and I went, wow, they're belly dancers. And so eventually a few years later when I moved back to California, I had the opportunity to join a belly dance class with females that looked like those, those females that were in the comic books. So again, I'm trying to live the life of the comic book Again, with my focus on how do you look like that? I, I became a surfer because that that was like the most barbaric look, living style that I could come up with. And I was became an avid surfer. The tubes, the porpoises, the sharks, the bikini girls. And then I started taking belly dance lessons. What year was that? This was like 75, 70, 1975. Why did you move to Aspen, Colorado? I write in the comic book that Conan was a hillman. I wasn't a hillman. The only steepness I saw were waves. And I came from California. And it was, you know, just cement shit. But in, I discovered Aspen, Colorado, which is you live at 8,000 and you ski at 11,000. And it was the first time I'm actually negotiating and learning how to climb, how to handle the lack of oxygen. I'm still reading the comic books. I'm still now in Aspen, Colorado in 1975. And I got a job as a belly dancer at the local hotel, which kept me in Aspen and kept me, I became like infamous in this little ski town of this California long hair surfer guy dancing the girls for his rent money, his ski money, his um, food money. And quite literally in the evening time, I would go to the hotel with a sword. And this was really key for me because the normal life of normal living, what do guys do? They did construction, they did this, they did this. Nobody walks to work with a sword in their hand and dance with girls that were like in the comic book. I created that for myself to stay again, focused in on this world, this Conan-esque world. Conan, when did you first meet Arnold Schwarzenegger? There was an actor friend of mine that came through Aspen that knew about me in California. He knew about my fanaticism with the comic books. And he said that he knew who was hired to be Conan. What year was that? This is 1976. The movie's made in 82. So this is at a time when Arnold was being approached by the producers like Milius and the director like Milius because of his body. And I knew nothing of him. All I knew was comic books and then it was like this spiritual connection with him 
where a guy relates that I know who was hired. So Arnold came to Aspen for the very first time in 1977. He was brought there by a girlfriend of his called Susan Moray, who would become valuable to me eight years later. What I did is I heard that he Arnold, Arnold was in town. He wrote a book, Education of a Bodybuilder. And my girlfriend at the time was in the library and she had seen that book and brought it to my attention. What was your first impressions of Arnold Schwarzenegger's book on bodybuilding? I looked at this book going, wow, look at this guy's body. Here's the Conan the, of that comic book character. So he came into town. I knew where he was staying at a hotel room. I knocked on his door and he opened the door. What was it like meeting Arnold in the flesh? There I was looking at a gentleman that obviously had done his homework for the body. He was, his health, his skin was glowing. I was so impressed because I was always into healing. And here's the best example of health that I'd ever seen. And I just poked my head in as he introduced me to his girlfriend, Susan Moray. And I said, I'm the only one in Aspen that has checked out your book. And he goes, mm -hmm. and I said, my name is Conan. And he took a step back and we shook hands and I bid him farewell. And then that impressed me because here I finally met the cartoon character that instinctually knew that I wanted to become his friend, his fighting friend. I really, in my mind, I didn't want to be like, oh, look at him. No, I wanted to be alongside him, hacking away. I imagined me on a Viking ship up front. And that was my fantasy. So consequently, I saw the opportunity to meet him further. How did you manage that? The opportunity was to hire him for a bodybuilding seminar. And I raised the money. I walked around Aspen, Colorado saying, I'm bringing in Arnold Schwarzenegger to Aspen for a bodybuilding seminar at the local theater. Arnold flies into town. He walks, we meet, we go to a local gym, pick up a weight bench and weights, bring it to the local theater, set it up on stage and he wanted me to come up on stage. I said, no, we want to watch you perform, right? And what was interesting to me is to see him with a weight bench and weights. And he looked like a giant kid with his toys. He obviously knew his, that, that resistance training. Yeah, that was his whole purpose anyway, was to be a person that when people lifted a barbell, they think of him. That's how he, that was his mind back when he was like a late teenager. So now I am his buddy. I'm the one that has now got him a thousand bucks. Being with him, sitting in a taxi cab with him to go have dinner together. This is my first time connecting with him. And the fact that I was with him at the theater to organize this whole thing with, it was only like the serious, bodybuilders that were in Aspen. There weren't that many, but it was like the, the neatest tight knit group that were aware of Schwarzenegger, right? So I'm in the taxi cab, I'm looking at his legs and his legs are monstrous. We were eating dinner together and I'm looking at his arm. I mean, he, he, it was so neat to see somebody who did his homework for the body. And he did, obviously. And he said, what are you looking at? And I go, I'm just looking at your friggin' arm, you know? And, but that was the beginning of our friendship. And the reason why I want this again, I wanted to find out who the person would be playing this character and become his friend. So now that has begun. Did Arnold come back to visit Aspen? Each year he would come out 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, he would come out to ski and he'd call me up. He said, meet me in five minutes. And I'd, whatever I was doing, man, I'd rush together to, to be with him. And he would take me out to dinner 
we'd go up on the mountain and ski together. We were buddies. It was so neat. It was a time when he hadn't done any of the other movies. Conan was going to be the make or break movie for him, right? And I am with him now each winter, social, walking the, the town together. Girls everywhere wanted me to introduce Arnold to him and guys coming up to me because I was like the conduit to introduce Arnold, right? And that was so cool because I was so unusual to the Aspen crowd anyway. I was the long hair belly dancer, which because Aspen was such a European town to be a belly dancer, how crazy is that? Well, now they're seeing me with Schwarzenegger. Now they see why I was doing what I was doing. I was trying to live this character in, in my own way in the modern world. So Conan, how did you eventually get into the movie? 82 comes up, the movie starts. I'm going crazy. I knew I was supposed to be in the movie. And I had tried a year before sending the producers, Ed Pressman. Hi, my name is Conan. I will fly you to Aspen. I will, I am the head massage therapist for this gym. You will be massaged so I could show you my skill so that it could be applied to this movie. Thank you very much, Conan. Thank you for being so persistent. But we're only, you know, thank you. That's it. How did that make you feel? I was full on. I was going crazy because I knew the movie had started and I knew I was supposed to be there from because of all my background of trying to live that fantasy and becoming Arnold's friend. I needed to be there. That's in Spain. So from there, what did you do next? The gentleman that I used to do massage work on was George Hamilton, the this famous actor, extremely groomed guy. And he had heard about my massage um, before any of the movie or anything like that. And I'm, he, he would come to Aspen, live in his mansion, and I'd be working on him. And I mentioned, I said, hey, how, how do I break into a movie? While he's on the table, I'm working on him. And he says, what movie? I go, Conan the Barbarian. And he says, oh, it's my buddy who wrote the script and is directing it and I'll give him a call when the massage is finished. So there, I got this magical connection now. And it was, he put me on the phone with Milius. And I get to talk to John Milius for the first time, introducing myself. And Milius was, he was reticent. He said, well, I'm only taking seven Americans, like James Earl Jones and Sven and certain Terry, Terry Leonard, um, the stunt coordinator, people like that. I mean, these are high level movie people. What did they want about this guy that wants to beg to be in the movie as a massage therapist, right? There was like, eh, okay. That is really cool that George took the initiative to connect you with John Millis. Did George do anything else to help you? So George went away and he met with Milius before he went to Spain. He comes back to Aspen a few mo a month later or a few weeks later. I mean, I wasn't missing much of the movie. And he says, I got the script and I've got you a letter that says, if you come to Spain, we will look at you. That's all. There was no guarantee. There was nothing. George said, listen, I came to Hollywood with 54 bucks. He said, you get yourself to a production site, you'll probably get hired, get there. I'm not lending you any money. So I borrowed a thousand bucks that paid me one way to Spain, another bunch of money in case I had to come back. I had three days worth of hotel and food money. That was it. I gave myself three days to get hired. So off to Spain I go. And I walk into the hotel where there, it was this 23 story hotel in Madrid. And there's no rooms to rent. This is where the cast is 
so I have no place to stay at the moment. I sat on a couch waiting for Arnold to come back. He was filming the orgy scene. So he walks into the door. He sees me in the hotel room. He looks at me. He looks at his watch. He says, we work out in an hour. See you downstairs in the gym. All right. I haven't seen the producers. I don't know if I'm I'm hired, but the, the, there's two things I wanted to accomplish. I wanted to train with Arnold and I wanted him to teach me the broadsword. Those are two Conan-esque things that I wanted, two goals that I wanted to accomplish. How did you first meet Sandal? So the first thing, right off the bat, I'm down in a little gym with Arnold. And down in this little hotel room that was just a specific gym for Arnold to train was Sandal Bergman. She asked Arnold, who is this guy? And Arnold says, he's from Aspen and he has, he's trying to be hired as the massage therapist. She perked up, she came right over to me. She says, I've been climbing the tower for three days. My back is hurting, can you help me? I put her on a weight bench, I do my magic fingers on her back, and then I do a little workout with Arnold, and I bid him farewell. I go find a hotel hostel nearby and to have some place to stay. And I am unbeknownst to me, Sandal went back to the movie set the next day and said, hire this guy. I didn't know that because I gave myself three days worth of money. By Crumb, it's Barbarian Merch Time. If you like this channel, please like and subscribe. If you would like to give extra support to this channel, we have a catalog of merchandise that can be purchased on teespring.com. Merch includes a variety of top shirts and hoodies for both men and women, displaying some cool barbarian style iconography. As noted, to avoid copyright over the trademark name of Conan, the name is spelled in the ancient Irish version as Kunan. Click on the link below to order your merch, represent, and support this channel for future content. Now back to the interview with Conan Angelo. Now, there's in this movie making business, there's flurry of activity. There's taxi cabs taking people to the set, buses taking the crew to the set. Um, I was like this pawn in this plethora of activity, and nobody was really paying attention to me. So. Again, I connect with Arnold the next day, but I'm not hired yet. I went to the producer and I said, hey, I'm here. Can I show you my skills? So he cleared his desk. It was a it was an office that they created in the hotel, a room. And I did a work on him. And he said nothing. Yes, that was the producer Buzz Feishens. So far, you have no idea that you'll get hired for the movie. What did you do next? So now it's the third day. I have running out of money. I am ready to give up because nobody's really paid attention to me. And I'm sitting in the hotel restaurant and I don't understand Spanish. And I'm still, don't, you know, I'm still like no comprende kind of type of person. And I heard three women in the next booth it, talking English. And I'm going, well, this is my chance to hustle some massage work, to give me some extra money to spend a few more days. I mean, literally, I'm desperate. I stand up, I go to the next table, I go, hi, I'm trying to be hired to be in the Conan film as a mas massage therapist, which, and I need to make some more money. And they looked up at me and they said, are you Conan? I go, yes, you're the talk of the set. I go, what? Sandal talked you up. I am Mil John Milius' wife. He wants you to do a massage on him tonight. Yes, that was Celia Millis, former wife of John Milius. She already was an established actor and she played the role of the high priestess who had some interaction with Conan while he pretended to be a devotee of Thulsa Doom. So I'm, I'm staring at John Milius' wife. I'm staring at Ron Cobb's the, the the set designer's wife and uh, Jerry Lopez's girlfriend. And they're all looking at me and saying, can please come up to John Milius's room tonight 
give him a massage. And I was stunned because I was right at the brink of not staying there. But here I am meeting John Milius, working on this bearish kind of a guy, doing as best a job as I could. The next morning, the three women picked me up in a taxi cab because he has already had the go ahead to get this guy hired. And I'm being taken in a taxi cab to a military base. And this big base is where they have the tower, they have the King Castle interior. Um, and I was issued into this little tent. I sat next to Arnold and Milius, was just these, us three. Steak, wine, Arnold is talking about writing a book about conquering. And this is just a lunch break. And here I am sitting with these two guys, having been ushered in with these three chicks into the military base. They get up, we walk into the, the tower. This is where they were jumping onto airbags from the tower and climbing up. That, that They spent several days filming this. And I was introduced to Rafaela de Lorenz. What a doll. She was 25 years old. She was in charge of a 20. Well, at that time, it was only 13 million was the, the movie. It bumped up to 20 million at the end. But he looked. she looked at me and just welcomed me. You know, she's Italian and she says, Conan, I am so glad to meet you. I mean, she was so warm to me. She says, Sandal talked all about you. She said, take care of Sandal. And I thought, oh, this is great already. I've got the hot chick that I get the massage for the next five months. So then they're busy filming. And now I'm all alone again. I could, and I walked into, they had just finished filming the, the assassination of the king, Osric, in this giant barbaric king castle room. And I was in heaven. The candles were a foot thick. The timbers are like four, the fake timbers were four feet in the diameter, lashed with huge ropes and the big king's throne. And I walked around in the back and you never saw that in the movie, but it was where the warriors would gather in this giant fireplace with weapons on the wall. And it was dimly lit. The activity was going over in that part of the, the, the this military base, big room. And inside I looked around and I went, I did it. I finally made it into the movie. Coming to that realization, how did you respond to that? I teared up a little bit. And this, in my mind, I went, Crom likes me. This was like my anointing. Because I'm all alone. I have nobody else to really express this to but I am standing in the warrior room and now begins my daily work. You mentioned before your involvement of the burning of the Sumerian village and now being on the set of King Osric's throne room. What was the next thing you participated in? The next day is the pit fights. That's where that grimy, dark fighting goes going on. And Milius sees me. I just arrived on the set the next morning and Milius calls my name, Conan, come here. And he places me behind the director's chair so I can work his neck and shoulders in between camera takes. That was my spot. That was the beginning of my work was to stand behind the friggin' director, watch him direct, watch him confer with Terry Leonard and Arnold about the stunts, talking to Milius about the writing how important the writing the script was and how it diver diverged from the actual filming at times. And he and I hit it off big time because I was really helping him out. But I got to be, I could go anywhere around the set, but my first place was right behind the director and doing massage work. I brought a skill that nobody else had. Arnold was very impressed with what I did. In fact, after working a month and a half of doing stuff like this, they came up to me, Milius and Arnold, and Milius gave me his production patch that says, A-Team Conan. And they both like presented me with this patch 
and said, you are really part of this production team. So I took that, I was so thrilled with that. Now, through the movie, I just, I, I was not like a hire where I was used a little bit, then I left, you know, I was there to experience the whole friggin' movie. I was there to enhance Millie's. I was there to be training with Arnold that evening. I was there to meet Terry Leonard and work with the second unit director. Yes, Terry is one of the greatest names in the movie industry in stunts. He has worked on other franchises, including Indiana Jones. Since then, he hasn't stopped working on major films. He's the guy that takes the, the, the general filming and it's an isolated stunt world. That's him. And I become really good friends with this guy, Terry Leonard. People don't realize how incredible a guy, a stunt guy, this guy, he worked with John Wayne. He would show me photos of him in the cavalry outfit behind John Wayne and horses and how he would flip cars for a dynamite and figuring that out, flip cars. And here I am part of the second unit team and he gave me the stunt patch for helping burn down the village. I had incredible experiences from then on for five months. I was very much part of that film. And because Milius liked me so much after working on him all the time, he says, I want to use you in the movie. What other scene and role did Milius get you to play then? There's a part where they're carrying this big soup kettle. Yes, the split pea and hand soup. And they pour it down the stairs and these hands and skulls go out. And he wanted me to be one of those guys, but he found out that they were all taken care of. So he said, well, I'm going to put you on this scaffolding on the interior of this Neanderthal eater of the dead kitchen. And you're going to be up on this scaffolding with all these gutted rubber bodies hanging and you're gonna take a rubber body and hand it down to the people down there so they can hack it up. In the meantime, Arnold and Sandal and Jerry are sneaking through the kitchen. So my film debut was in the interior of this Neanderthal eater of the dead kitchen. They put me on the scaffolding so I was more apparent. Was, things were magical for me. Things were working in my favor in terms of being seen, right? So I'm up on this scaffolding. Before that, they sent me to the costume room. And there, they put a beard on, they put this hat on, they put these clothes on. I walk out in front of Milius and he says, uh-uh, he looks too good. I looked like I was from Spartacus. I mean, I looked great. <laughs> they hacked up the thing, they put gasoline and dirt on me. And I'm up on the scaffolding as an actor, I'm going, what kind of character? What kind of... I'll play the friggin' guy blind. So as I'm going down the scaffolding, I'm feeling the bodies, these rubber gutted bodies, until I get to the female. And I'm going to grab that female body and I'm going to hoist it down. So it's in the movie. It's got me moving across the, the, the place. And again, I'm in character playing him blind. And it also shows a close-up of Arnold and Sandal looking up and I'm handing down this body. All right, my little movie moments, right? What was Arnold's response to your first appearance in front of the camera? Arnold says, you did great. He took me aside. I'm in the kit, that giant kitchen. And he took me aside and he says, now start your uh, training, your broadsword training. He literally took me aside and started teaching me the strokes and you know when you see his his people try to mimic him on on facebook but if you look at his the way he stops it it's i the reason i think is because the last part of the stopping of the sword is the flick of the wrist and so he was telling me these nuances and i'm going far out i'm training with him and now he's teaching me the broadsword. I've earned my stunt patch. I've earned the, the, the patch for being part of this Conan Barbarian epic. 
And now I have several months more of being living the different parts. Tell us more about the other roles you played. I, I placed different different parts, falling down well. Um, I get killed in back-to-back -back scenes as this, they put ugly masks on me. How did it make you feel wearing the mask? Made me feel so homely and so forlorn. It was like I looked at people and people were like, going, oh, that guy's so freaking ugly. And I, and I felt it. And I played Neanderthal, eater of the dead, trying to figure out how, how I'm supposed to walk or do that. They had, they put blood bags on me. The, the very, so now my second scene is now I'm doing a stunt. My first stunt. I want you to run off this little ledge and jump on Sandal and she'll hack you in midair. And while Arnold and Jerry Lopez and the princess are escaping through. So now I'm a Neanderthal eater of the dead. I've got this ugly fucking mask on. I'm going to run at her, leap up. I make sure I leaped up so I could be seen like I'm doing something spectacular. And she slices me midair. I fall to the ground. She does, you'll see in the, the film, she hits me and I my leg goes up as if it's the last reflex of getting killed, right? Right after that, I'm in the next scene. I'm There's two Neanderthals going after Sandal now. I've already killed in the one, so I lowered my gait, not knowing how to maybe change my character, but I lowered my gait. They had a blood bag about this size with a on a pad. So now I have a spear. So I lowered my gait and I run after her like more like a gorilla. And the spear is to be hacked by her. She's supposed to spin around. I have the stick up here. She hacks that, stabs me, breaks the, bed, the blood bag, and I roll out. Well, I got hurt right off the bat. She's not a fighter. She's not precise. She's a dancer that was learning martial arts. She was unlike Sven Olthorsen. Sven, he and I used to talk about stunt fighting. Stunt fighting is different than real fighting. You know, you're like holding the, the sword differently. You're bringing the sword down to here. You're not hurting. These guys, um, Sven was precise because he was a martial artist. Sandal was not. Sandal was scary. I'm supposed to run full force into her like a Neanderthal with a knock spear. She's supposed to hack it off, go like that. She does that, spins around and stabs me in the, she missed. She hits me in the ribs. So they, second take, they put the blood bag there. Same thing, boom, she hits me on the other side. And now the third time when she spins, she's not even looking. And I literally went to Terry Leonard, who's the stunt coordinator. And he always told me, he said, if it gets too much, we'll stop production, we'll figure it out. Well, that's what happened. I went, Terry, I'm too scared to run full into her. She'll hurt me. So they made the blood bag bigger, the pad bigger, so she had a better target. And it, would, it took seven takes. And quite literally, it worked. Once she realized what she was doing and how precise she had to be in hitting me and killing me. But there was back-to-back -back stunts right there. That's incredible. How you got to face off with a Valerian battle. What was the next scene you were in? There's a scene where it's the guy being pitched down the well. And he had done the stunt. It's a well here and then you fall into like three boxes, three tiers of boxes down this well. Well, he had hurt his ribs. So there, there is a scene in the, the movie where you see the body traveling down the well. But the beginning was me being at, the, I was substituting for him. He had me get in these incredible letters. I, this was my favorite part, because these are the things I'd really like being in, these fighting leathers. And I had a hood over my face 
because they had to keep me concealed. If I was playing all these parts, they wanted to make sure my face was concealed, either with that hood or with face masks, etc. So there I am at the top of the well. She stabs me. She she puts a noose around my neck. It took him two hours to set that noose up, so it wasn't going to go when I when I fell down the well. And Terry goes, "Wait, I want you to pitch yourself out. I want you to cl- like this. You see stuntmen falling. You see them clawing the air." Once you claw the air, don't hit the side of the well. And then at the very last moment, I want you to pivot so that you hit the boxes like that. It was a lot to take in. It was like, okay, here we go, action. And he, she stabs me and she wraps the, the noose around my neck. And I make sure I don't pitch myself out further to hit the wall. I just kind of fold down doing that at the very last minute Kaboom. And I'm laying on these boxes. It felt really cool. It really, it was soft landing, right? And Terry Leonard's got a camera shooting up the, the well. And I'm waiting and I'm waiting. He says, cut. And I was so excited. I go, this is a stunt I want to do again. So I started climbing the rope and Terry Leonard laughs. She says, Conan, you did it in one take. I want to call you one take Conan. Age of Conan Unchained. The mythical lands of Hyboria calls to thee. Wanderers' quests are in need to be vanquished. Join me on High Adventure of the many kingdoms of Robert E. Howard's fictional world of a distant past that could have been. And if you dare, you can collaborate with me for domination in a world full of monsters and rival armies battling for supremacy. Throughout the episodes, I'll be giving commentary on Howard's Hyborian Age, and I'll be taking chats from viewers and co-players to discuss all things Conan-related. Tune into my Twitch channel at www.twitch.tv slash amegmorgen. I look forward to seeing my fellow barbarians in the Age of Conan Unchained. Now for the interview with Conan Angelo. I was successfully doing massage work. Now I'm being successfully doing stunt work. And that, then I'd be put in all these different characters when the reason is that Milius didn't want to go through the process of having to go to the, um, the, the guy that hires people to get a character to play the part. I was right there. He goes, Conan, get in that outfit, do that. Lay on that rock, we'll have blood spilling out. Um, I got to do all these 11 different bad guys in the film because I was right there, available, and Milius loved what I was doing for him. At the end of the production, what did you get up to? Excitedly, at the end of five months, the producers came up to me and saying, we're having a cast party. It's in, the, it's in the hotel. We knew you were a belly dancer. And would you perform belly dancing for the cast party? Me, James Earl Jones, Terry Leonard, Stuntman, Sandler Bergman, um, Arnold were in the audience and on the stage. And they said, go into the costume area and pick out what you need. So I picked out my riding boots from the booty. I picked out the kafia that goes over your head like this. They thought, they didn't know what I did as a belly dancer. They didn't know it was like a feminine or something like that. It was not that way at all. I had, I got, I enlisted two flamenco guitarists behind me and they started playing and I performed my belly dancing to Sandal. And as I walked off the stage, Arnold said to me, Conan, if you took your clothes off for women, you might earn a lot of money. That registered in my mind big time, okay? So now, I belly danced at the friggin' cast party. So that was like the culmination of my entertaining whoever I was entertaining. The very last day we're having breakfast in the hotel breakfast room. James Earl Jones, uh, Arnold and Sven and other people. 
and I'm ready to off. I'm ready to go. I'm I've got a car waiting for me, and I've got a gentleman, and we're going surfing from Spain up through Portugal, and I have already a ride back to London, and then off back to uh, to California. So I bid, I was bidding him farewell, and I came up to James Earl Jones, and he watched me over all these months. He saw me participating with the production. He saw me massaging the chicks. He saw me taking care of Milius. He observed me, and when I said goodbye to him, he looked up at me and he said, Conan, I don't envy you, I admire you. And I went, oh, far, far off. Goodbye, James Earl Jones, thank you. Then I went up to Arnold. Now this is my last time to see him. And he is hunched over eating his breakfast and Sven is there. I go, Arnold, take care, I'm off to surfing. I'm gonna be checking out the waves as I go to the coast of Spain, up through Portugal, up to Morocco. And I'm meeting some girl belly dancers from Aspen to belly dance in Morocco. I split, went back to uh, California, went to Chippendales, which had just opened up the male review for females. And I looked and I asked the guys there, I said, what are your rip away pants? Because I wanted to make those rip away pants. Learned how to do it, went back to Aspen, took jeans, sliced them down the side, had a seamstress put on these buttons. I was now a cowboy stripper. Arnold had told me that I would make a bunch of money and I did. So I would go on the girls' parties after that. Tell us about the premiere of the Conan movie. The premiere in Aspen. Now I'm in a movie theater. I'm sitting directly center. I've got George Hamilton's hot looking girlfriend that knew my whole history as my date. Flanking me were all these martial artists that were friends of mine. In front of me was the police chief and the cops. And I watched this movie and I went, there I am, there I am. How would you sum up how you achieved the Conan fantasy? I had a very Conan-esque goal, train with Arnold, teach me the broadsword. I don't know what else I was gonna do, but I did become the massage therapist and stuntman and become so well liked on the set that that was the, my ability to be myself on the set and live the barbaric fantasy. And it's so fun. What are your thoughts on this movie becoming a pop culture sensation? Now, because the kids that saw the movie back in 82, 83, and they're seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And it impressed them so that they got into Robert E. Howard and they got into the Conan books and they got into being with Schwarzenegger. And they post all this stuff now, now that they're adults. Oh, this is the top movie. I love this movie. I love the, uh, uh, the score. And it cracks the score, which was written by Basil Polidaris. Did you meet Basil in person back then? I saw him when he first came to the movies to the hotel because he was invited by Milius to come see the movie being made. And he's standing outside the hotel one morning when he arrived and he didn't know what to do. And when you, in the morning, you're given this, um, this itinerary of the characters, what's going to happen, what the scenes are, what the transportation you know, the taxi cabs and the buses, etc. And I had a taxi cab driver. And I looked at him and I knew I wanted to help him. I wanted to talk shop with him. And I instantly said, come with me. Put him in the back seat of my, my taxi cab driver and, and the taxi. And we talked shop all the way to the film set. And I was the first to bring him to the film set. You know, people are amazed at his music. In fact, I sat at the piano years later up at Milius's, where he showed Milius his uh, concept for the movie. And I remember sitting at the piano going, hmm, this is cool. So I love all the people that have loved the movie. I love them. I looked at all the people that write about, oh, this is Krom, Krom, this, this. And Krom is my friend. I already got his blessing. 
to be in that friggin' movie. And this fact that I can go, oh, I was there behind the scenes. I saw that. I saw that being made. I saw this happening. This is what happened. This is how we had lunch. This is how, G how Arnold, he was crucified in the tree. But that, that afternoon, I'm sitting next to him. He's looking at, he's looking at Jesus Christ, having blood, we're having like a last uh, a lunch together. And the henchman, Sven and Ben Davidson, the 6'8 football player guy, uh, we're all sitting around him. And I'm going, boy, this is just like the Last Supper. I'm sitting the actual Christ with the henchmen around me. And these are the experiences I had with him. He and I, we we just had the best time, the best time. He considered me a good buddy. How did Arnold acknowledge your contribution to the movie? He saw how I gave to that film my expertise and I became, you know, somebody that helped his movie out i helped i brought like he said brought spirit to the movie i enhanced people when i was on the set if you're hurting i'll help you out you know what does it mean to you being involved in the conan movies i'm thrilled because i really immersed myself into that whole experience so that i could relate this to everybody else i want i want to share my my experience because a lot of people they hang the friggin sword on the wall they got it encased they've got all these comic books and i'm the one that goes here's the comic book here's what i took from that comic book and put it into my my life here's the broadsword that i swing rather than have it on a wall this to 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 think like the character Conan made his life swinging this and hacking up bodies. Always just go, how the hell do you get into that kind of a, right? And I get to do that as an actor. I get to pretend that I'm fighting giant spiders. I'm getting to pretend I'm hacking people up. Not for real, but because I was in the movie, I know the fakery of it all. And that's what my expertise is hey, join me and train, but it's all for fake. It's not It's not to get hurt. In fact, what I liked about being in the movie is that after being killed a couple times that day, and I'm sitting with Terry Leonard, Arnold's fan, and we're at a Spanish restaurant, and we're talking about the stunts that we're gonna do tomorrow. To me, that was the way, the Conan way, the safe Conan way, was being with professional friggin' fighters that you could annihilate a village, you could do that stuff, get paid, having a good time with, with him. You mentioned you trained a lot with Arnold in the gym. Can you tell us more about the memorable moments working out with Arnold and any tips for all the aspiring barbarians to take on board in regards to training and building that Conan physique? For the very first day, I was tired. That, that was just three days I was there. The fourth day was like, I'm officially hired. That night in the gym with Arnold and Sven, Arnold looked at me and said, now begins your world-class workout. And he fired off his arm in front of my face and it was bigger than my head. That was my beginning. I know Arnold from how he trained in Conan the Barbarian. I know how he trained in the Conan the Destroyer. Conan the Barbarian, he's an 18-year-old raw youth. Second movie, he's like a 30-year-old hardened mercenary. So there was a difference in the, the, the body. And you know there's see that in the movie. And I was there, I was with him. He, he showed me the things that made him different. He would, ha I'd have experiences with him which were so cool. It would be me. I was the only one really interested in working out with him, meaning through the whole time. I would, stuntmen like Sven would be hired, flown in, flown out. But it would be he and I in the gym, and he would teach me things. He would scratch his head going, Conan, I don't know why people don't put their bodies first. And in my mind, I go, there's millions of reasons why people don't put their bodies first. 
for one thing, ignorance, big time. This is why I was wanting to be with him to see what he did through the day. So we would have breakfast or we'd work out together. And then we'd go to, he and I would go to the gym together. And he would, he'd go, I think blood into my muscle. And I'd be sitting next to him while he was doing wrist curls. And I'd see how his forearm would just kind of explode. And I thought, you know, and I'd watch him work out and I could see how his mind would go to body part, to body part, to body part, to body part. Then there was a moment we're walking to our gym and he goes, I hate chin-ups. I had to do 10 sets of 15 for Mr. Olympia. So off we go into the little gym. He had a little ghetto blaster and he liked 50s rock and roll music. He plunked that on and he started to do his chin-ups, okay? So right away, it was interesting to see how his mind would take something that he hated and just did it, okay? He was very much, he always promotes making habits that you don't have to think, just do it. He talks about that now on his, um, his uh, podcast and stuff like that. He wants people to get into that habit of doing something. And he was the epitome of that. Oh, here was another thing. Work out as if a thousand people are watching you. That changes your whole demeanor. You know, when you look, I'm doing curls. Now I'm doing curls in front of a thousand people. And he's currently, you see him being filmed a lot, working out, that's his whole concept. See me working out, thousands of people. Do what I do, please. And you know, that was, Work out as if a thousand people are watching you. Beginners don't know how to balance their cardiovascular, their their abs, and their uh, weights. Um, thinking blood into his muscle. Your mind is your most important muscle. Da -da. That's pretty pretty cool. And I knew it. I knew him. At dinner times, I'd see him think. I would see him work out and see how his mind would go to different body parts. And I went, hmm, that's an important thing to know, is just thinking blood to get that pump into the muscle, but using your mind on top of it. He said it takes about three sets to get blood into that muscle. And then on the fourth and fifth set, he would up the weight so that he could push it more in a safer way for that muscle. Just wanted to throw that out, because that's the stuff that Arnold knows I'm passing on to all the barbarian people out there. And I want them to know this stuff because it's a fantasy. Tell us about your involvement in the online Conan community. I am currently like online contributor and I and I'm saying live the fantasy. Live the fantasy meaning take that sword, start swinging it. You'll see how difficult it is to friggin' fight. And when you read the Robert E. Howard writings, you're supposed to be like a pantherish. You're supposed to have the speed blazing with that sword. Well, that takes practice. And it's so cool is that stuff is like what I'm doing now is training more, having the opportunity to do it for a reason, for to pass the information on to all the people that like the movie and are got locked in on it when they were kids. Well, you're definitely a fountain of wisdom and knowledge, Kanan. And barbarians, you've heard it from the man himself. Head to the gym. Head to the Temple of Iron. Get fit. Get strong. Get swole. Work out with the sword. That's it. I love it. Sir, thank you so much. I really appreciate your effort to get to know me. And I really thank you. This is the... The, the the part in my life that I've earned from doing what I've done and I'm glad to pass on information but I love your life I love your mentality and I appreciate you doing what you're doing for me thank you Conan for your kind words it's a real pleasure to have you on the show what can I say that was an amazing story going from the sands of Maui discovering the character of Conan in the comics pursuing the fantasy by joining the Conan movie production. Now, my man, salute you, Conan! We 
really admire your courage and tenacity to live out the fantasy. I can speak on behalf of a lot of the Conan fans that what you have achieved as a stuntsman, a massage therapist, and to be welcomed into the inner circle of friendship with Arnold Schwarzenegger and John Millis is itself a fantasy that all Conan fans are in awe of. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? By Crom, comment below this video to share with the Conan community what you liked about this interview and what questions you would like to ask Conan for a sequel interview. For the audience out there, we thank you for watching. And by Crumb, like and subscribe to support the channel. Thank you again, Conan, and we'll see you very soon. Until next time, stay strong, stay swole, and stay juicy. So for all you viewers out there that wish to keep up to date with Conan Angelo's activity, you can find him on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and also his official website, www.conantreasure.com All these links will be included in the description below of this video.